Well, uh, YouTube, I've been doing some JB welding. Great stuff. It cost me for this little pack, I think it was like four eighty at Lowe's Home Improvement. So, I mean, it's well worth the price of buying a cheap epoxy like this guy right here. And it doesn't work worth the crap. But, I know that's a muffler epoxy, but I was hoping it would work and I had some laying around. But, you know, that doesn't work for this application. So, basically what I've done is I have my 12 horse Briggs uh, crankcase cover off. And I'm also working on the intake manifold. And I JB welded this drain back plug. And I know that seeped down a little bit, but I couldn't get it much better. It used to go all the way down to where that big glob is. And I plugged that one. And then I cut that one because there was no bearing oiler at all. That's for the cam. And then for the crank, I enlarged it. And I'll file it down to make it a little more pretty before I do it. And that's, um, I don't know if it's long enough, but it's, if someone can reference, I don't have a ruler sitting around. No, actually I do. Okay. Ruler. So, that's an inch. So this thing is roughly... about a quarter inch deep. So it's about a quarter inch deep. And I enlarged a little bit. And hopefully that'll be enough. The oil level will be right here. So the cam will pick up some oil and go vroom, 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 spring it, sprint it all around. Um, but yeah, I'm just hoping. And the only other thing I did on the crank is I uh, charger Miles said I had to plug this hole. It made sense. They didn't have one of those little plugs he had laying around that wasn't in good use like on that craftsman over there. So I was just kind of fiddling around and grabbed a bottle cap. And was like a wonder popped right on there perfect size I mean it fits the inside diameter the lip makes it a little bit tight but I mean everything is perfect put JB weld all around it J a little dot of JB weld around the edges and it went on there nicely and I mean, I mean there's not much overhang at all but I think that'll work well and then I'll get a, a 90 degree and go up still got to clean out the inside because this is a combination of little bits of JB weld and old oil and all sorts of yum and aluminum dust but um so basically also my engine the oil is going to fling because I had the oil flinger in it's going to fling around and go in here and then that one doesn't have a drain plug, but it will probably end up seeping out a little bit in that little dip that that has. Then this one has a drain plug, and that the oil will go all the way back there to this little set of ring. See that little ring right there? And there is a drain plug, or a drain hole. Hmm, you need more light. I understand. Don't hate me, YouTube. <laughs> I love doing that in my videos, blinding everyone. Anyway, so there's the drain back hole. Let's see, you can see it. I have a flashlight in it. And uh, so that's the oil will drain back through there. And uh, yeah, now as far as the intake manifold goes, I found this steel, um, I guess it's, this would be pipe because it's thicker than, um, Raw, no, rod is solid. Anyway, I found the steel pipe and laying around and it was a little bit longer. It used to be that long and I was like, originally I was going to try to use this for a pulse jet, but it just wasn't big enough. So, I, I'm going to make it, that's going to be my straight pipe, pipe exhaust. Very short, very loud, very poppy. And here's my intake and my, part of my intake. It's a slow process. So basically, in my C-clamp here drying, I have a homemade, very badly homemade, I might add, uh, plate of steel that, see, look at that horrible, 
that um, well, I will file down and put some RTB, RTG, I can't ever say it. That sealer, that really great liquid sealer. Uh, where is it sitting? Oh well, anyway, I'll put some sealer on it and make a gasket. And then the carburetor will bolt to this end. And the carburetor will sit like this. And at this end, on the other side, I'll put another steel plate. Here's my dying carburetor. Um, I think it's this one. Yeah, so it's this one. And I don't have a bit large enough, you see, to cut a hole like that. And I don't have a drill press, unfortunately. It was supposed to go over there, but that just didn't work out. Um, so, I'll drill this back out and make another one. Maybe try to make this one neater. Then this one will go on opposite to these holes. The two holes the, there and there will be facing top and bottom. That will allow my carburetor, if it was mounted to the engine, on a lawnmower, the carburetor sits, oh, you can't see that, it sits, anyway, it sits um, horizontal, and the engine is vertical, so it sits opposite to the crankshaft. Now, my, now that I've rotated the crankshaft, my, my carburetor would look like this, and that's not going to work, so I had to build a mount to rotate it, and it should pop on there like that, and then it would... Do it. It's going to have a bit of weight to it, but I might put another mount on this side. Yeah, but anyway, I kind of just did this video to show Charger Miles that I was doing the using the information he gave me. I'm um, trying to fix that starter motor. It's giving me a hard time. I had to clean the brushes. And everyone knows how much of a pain they are to get back in there. So, yeah, that's that's really about it. Um, so I guess I'll call this a Brick and Stratton conversion update, and I'm just kind of packing up. Alright, well anyway, that's about it.